So recently, one of my freelance clients asked me, Josh, can we implement role-based authentication into the app that we're building together? And I said, yes, of course we can do that. It's a good security practice that makes a lot of sense. And while I had done it plenty of times in the past, I was never 100% happy with the way I used to implement it. So I set out on finding a better way to do it and I found one. This is the one I'm gonna share with you in this video. I think it's A, secure and B, easy for beginners to understand, so that's why I want to share it with you. Let's dive right into it and take a look at how to implement it. So here is how we are going to implement role-based authentication. First off, I've got the dev server already running, so we can navigate into the browser, click the login tab, and before we actually log in, I want to show you what happens. So let's start up the Prisma Studio. I am going to be using Prisma for this. You could just use um, type ORM SQLives if that's what you wanted to. The core feature or the core idea is going to stay the exact same. Um, so we can look into our database. That's why I'm using Prisma. I think this is a super cool feature. We've, we got access to the account, the session, and a user. And now if we log in with any account, that's going to create that account in the database. Now, this is totally fine. Um, it just created the account. We can see that as the user right here, it created all the relevant information and then same for the actual account. And based on this, we can now implement our role-based authentication. Um, again, the, the problem is totally unrelated to this. This is from a different project. Don't worry about this. Um, so let's say, for example, we only wanted this page to be accessed by an admin. Right? If we took a look at the current implementation, when we go to the dashboard page, this is the one we are navigated to, then we are always throwing an auth required error. But we want this to be an, and let me zoom in a bit for you, an admin only page, where only admins should be able to navigate to this page right here. How do we go about implementing this? And the first step would be, for every user, we need to determine their role, right? What is, is this is this user a admin? Is this user just a regular user? And the way we can do that is let's navigate into our Prisma schema like that. We currently only see the default options from next auth where we have an account, a session, a user, and then some boilerplate at the start of the file. And now before the user, let's implement something called the user role. We're gonna call this an enum instead of a normal model, which will allow us to just select the enum options later, which is super handy. Let's call this a user role. And in here, we can determine which possible roles there are for users. Let's just say there's an ad, oops, an admin role. And also there should be, and this is not going to become a separated, just go into the next line. And there should also be a user role. And just like that, we have created the roles, but we haven't assigned them to any particular user yet. And the way we can do that is down here in the user model. We can say the role, this is a custom property that we're creating together right now, is going to be of type user role, the enum up here. And then we can also set a default value. It would always make sense to have the default as a user and obviously not as an admin. And when I press control and spacebar to see which options we have, we can already see that an admin and a user is pre-selectable. So in my case, I'm going to choose the user, hit save, and then we can push that into our database. Let's do that in here. Now to push this, at least with Prisma uh, into the database, the command will be yarn or npm, or I think it's npx, Prisma db push. And what that does is it pushes the local changes we have just made in our Prisma file up into the cloud database that we're using. In my case, that's CockroachDB. You could be using MongoDB and PlanetScale, anything else. It doesn't matter. And then we can say yarn Prisma generate because we have now pushed up the data into the database, but we still need locally um, to have those types to work with TypeScript. And then we also want to restart our TypeScript server to reflect the changes that we have just done. And after that all is done, that was super quick by the way, we can go into our database once again and take a look and by running yarn Prisma Studio or npx Prisma Studio and take a look at the current state of the database. 
And we should be able to see that for every user, not for every account, let's navigate into the users. We can now see there is a role property added right here that we have just created. If I go into this and wanted to change it, we can already see we have a user option and an admin option. I just need to click the admin, click save one change, and then I change the role of that particular person. However, if we try to get access to this role in the um, application, right, on the page, for example, we can get rid of the error for now. Let's try to get access to the session, at least with next auth. The way you do that is by saying const session or call this whatever you want. It's going to be get server session. And in here, we want to path, pass the auth options that we have. We can just log this out for now. Let's log out the session. That means whenever I navigate to this page and reload it, then the session should be logged out. And as you can see, the session does not contain any information about the current user role, which is a problem, right? If we just wanted to display the page based on the user role, we don't even have access to the role yet. So the question is, how do we do that? And the way we do that is by going into the auth options, the options we use to configure um, next auth. In my case, that's going to be in the lib folder because I put it there. In your case, that might as well be in the actual API route. That's common as well. Um, if you're using next auth for this, then you chances are you have it in the pages directory under API auth and then next auth to have the code in here. I just um, offloaded that into the lib folder. Let's go back in there into my auth.ts and your code should look somewhat similar to this, right? Um, and the key that we want to do is whenever we access the session from any page, this is what we get access to, currently at least. It's the user ID, the name, the email, and the image. And if I added something else, like a session .user I don't know is going to be equal to hello world, we're just going to put in a string there. Um, first off, that's going to give us a type error because this is not defined anywhere in the next auth type that we're using. To do that, we're going to go into our next auth.d.ts or whatever you call the file. If you even have a file, if you're in JavaScript, you won't even get the error. If you're in TypeScript, you just might. And the session doesn't know what this value is. So if we just add it, the I don't know of type string, then it will stop complaining. And now it will know what this value is. And interestingly, now if we reload the page, now we will get actually access to the I don't know property. So that's how we put a property into the session. Obviously, we, we don't want a um, property that is this useless. We want the actual user role. And the way we do that is by saying session.user.role is going to be equal to, and this is going to be equal to the token dot role, because the token, the JSON web token that we're using to do all of this is going to contain the role because now we are going to put it in there. Your code, again, might look different than this, but the key takeaway that you should have is um, we want to return the role in our JSON web token. No matter what your code looks like, the JSON web token should contain the role of the user. In my case, since we persist that role in the database, as I've already shown you, I'm fetching the database user at the very beginning for every JSON web token that's created. And then that allows me to put in the dbuser.row that we fetch from the database into the JSON web token. So it then gets propagated to the session callback in next auth, and we can add it to the session. So database into the JSON web token into the session. That's how we do it. Now, again, the types are not defined, but we know the types. The role is of type user role that we get from um, the Prisma client, because at least with Prisma, it's super handy. If we define it in our Prisma schema, we have access to it as a TypeScript type. And similarly, since we're also adding this to the session, we want the role property in here too, as a user role. We can save all of this. We have added the role to the JSON web token and to the session. Meaning, if I reload the page now, we should get access to the current user role. And we do right here as admin. So to conditionally check the logic, we want to prevent access to the admin only page if the role is not an admin. And to do that, we can say if session 
dot user and now we can see the role in here because we just added it if the session user role is un is, is not equal is unlike to and then either admin or user in our case that's going to be admin in that case we want to throw a new error saying you need to be an admin for example period so just like that we turned this into an admin only page and if we reloaded this we are an admin but if i change the role back to user in the database and we refetch this then it says you need to be an admin and we are not allowed to access the page how cool is that so now we know this works securely very intuitively because honestly the only things we've done quick summary is first off we've added the enum user role to our prisma schema then we have implemented a role property for each user again i've done this in prisma you can do this in sqlize in type orm in node postgres even whatever um, orm you use um, as long as you get the idea of adding a user role and then adding each role to a user um, this works just fine specifically with next auth we then added the role types only if you're in typescript right if not you don't even need to uh, bother and then we get access to the role for each JSON web token. Again, this is not next auth specific. Whatever you use for authentication, as long as you use JSON web tokens, um, you can store the information in there. However you do it, it does not matter. And then from the JSON web token, whenever we create a session, we read the role value from the JWT, put it into a session that we can then retrieve for every page for example we can determine the current session and then check if the session role property is equal or unequal to admin and then do the rendering um, based on that that's how we implement role-based authentication i thought this was a super cool approach super clean approach to do this that's also easy to understand for beginners um, if you like the video make sure to leave a like and i'll see you in the next one have a good one and bye bye